Greetings and salutations fellow book readers, this is Mark and the book I will review today is Down and Out in Paris and London. Before we continue, this is personalized limited edition of the Down and Out in Paris and London with leather cover designed and made by me. At the end of the video I will tell you a couple of ways of how you can get one for yourself if you are interested. Now let's get back to the review. Down and Out in Paris and London is an autobiographical work by George Orwell published in 1933. I know many people consider it a novel since it contains some fiction but which autobiography doesn't. Orwell is most famous for his political novels 1984 and Animal Farm but this is his most personal work and one that laid the foundation for his later novels. It was published by Victor Gallange, who is famous for publishing science fiction and fantasy stories. Gallange was also a socialist and that's where he coincided with George Orwell and probably was partly responsible for Orwell's early political illusions. Orwell already sympathized with the left but didn't become a convinced socialist until the Spanish Civil War a few years later. Orwell was born in India and spent his early adult years as a policeman in Burma, which at that time, just like India, was a British colony. And I think these experiences, seeing how the imperial system and colonial exploiting worked, must have created some doubts about the society he was part of, and made them question the practical application of capitalism. What is Down and Out in Paris and London about? In general, the book is a memoir about being poor and the struggles that come with it. It is about survival in the early 20th century urban area when the only thing you have to offer is your physical labor. I think it is best said by Orwell himself in this excerpt from the book. I am trying to describe the people in our quarter, not for the mere curiosity, but because they are all part of the story. Poverty is what I am writing about, and I had my first contact with poverty in this slum. Now, let's do a bit of the plot. The book is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part takes place in Paris, and Orwell starts it by describing the living conditions of the lower classes, which includes many immigrants. At first he has enough money to live on, but quickly loses it and is left with the bare minimum to survive. So he pawns his clothes and starts to look for work, which one he finds is underpaid and irregular. Initially he sees his new economic situation with a bit of romantic curiosity, even somewhat of a consultation. It is a feeling of relief, almost of pleasure, at knowing yourself at last genuinely down and out. You have talked so often of going to the dogs, and well, here are the dogs, and you have reached them, and you can stand it. It takes off a lot of an anxiety. But quickly the brutal and difficult reality of basic survival hits, and he starts to experience the hard side of being down and out. Orwell befriends a Russian immigrant, Boris, and for the time being the two of them share together their struggles with poverty. After a period of hunger because of lack of work, both of them start working in a hotel restaurant where there's plenty of food but long working hours. Orwell works as a plongeur or dishwasher, which he considers one of the slaves of the modern world, and he describes the caste system of the hotel as a microcosm of the society. There are many colorful characters working in the hotel and they share their bizarre tales with Orwell. The Paris slums are a gathering place for eccentric people. People who have fallen into solitary have met grooves of life and given up trying to be normal or decent. Poverty frees them from ordinary standards of behavior, just as money frees people from work. But eventually the long working hours and little rest take their toll on him and he decides to return to London. 
Back in London, Orwell fails to secure a job and becomes a tramp. He wanders between hostels, lodging houses and Salvation Army shelters, where he meets a variety of homeless vagabonds who share their stories with him. He also describes the difficulties and struggles he and the other face as tramps and the reasons behind them. He also notices that in London everything costs money, even sitting on a bench. And further he writes about the differences between American tramps as described by Jack London in People of the Abyss and the English tramps, which probably was caused by different laws and social conditions in each country. The book's conclusion is that nobody wants to be poor or a tramp, but rather is forced into it by circumstances. And that's the basic plot. What are my thoughts about Down and Out in Paris and London? It is enjoyable and relaxing reading in a sense that you don't have to think and analyze it to understand what Orwell is saying, contrary to his more complex works such as previously mentioned 1984 and Animal Farm. The book could have been two books, one about Paris and the other about London, since the only thing the two parts have in common is the struggle to survive when you are poor. In the first part, Orwell describes interwar expat Paris of the lost generations Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald, but from the other side of the bar, without the gay allure of the artist's lifestyle, and instead he focuses on the physical labor with very real scrubbing of the dishes to survive. Actually, it is more of Henry Miller's Paris from Tropic of Cancer, where the hero is an aspiring writer, but without the time to write, since all of it is taken by basic survival tasks, such as having something to eat and securing a roof over your head. During the time Orwell spent in Paris, he describes the exploitation of the workers by the system and continuation of slavery in a modern form, adapted to new circumstances. He works as a plongeur or dishwasher and analyzes his position to portray present-day slavery. A plongeur is a slave and a wasted slave, doing stupid and largely unnecessary work. He is kept at work ultimately because of a vague feeling that he would be dangerous if he had leisure. And educated people who should be on his side, a quisk in the process because they know nothing about him and consequently are afraid of him. The book also shows Hotel as a microcosm of the Orwell's world, with its class system and patriarchy, which as in the real world has a logical explanation. He tries to explain preference for men in positions that would seem women could do as good of a job. For example, male domination as restaurant cooks, it might seem on the surface that women might be better at it than men, but the restaurant kitchen operates differently from home kitchen. In a restaurant, punctuality and logistics are more important than the cooking, and men in general are better at those tasks. And a similar case can be made for busboy, where strength and speed are most important, thus it favors the male of the species. The second part describes life in London from a perspective of a tramp and what is it like to live in English society without money. In practice, nobody cares if work is useful or useless, productive or parasitic. The sole thing demanded is that it shall be profitable. In all the modern talk about energy, efficiency, social services and the rest of it, what meaning is there except get money, get it legally, and get a lot of it. Money has become the grand test of virtue. By this test, beggars fail, and for this they are despised. Orwell experiences the life of the discarded in the first person and feels the hunger, rejection, and general sense of being socially invisible and notices that once he changed his clothing, people started to treat him differently. Further, he describes common conditions tramps have to face, such as poor hygiene caused by scarce supplies and prevailing homosexuality because of limited contact with women. 
A tramp, therefore, is a celibate from the moment when he takes to the road. He is absolutely without hope of getting a wife, a mistress, or any kind of woman except, very rarely, when he can raise a few shillings, a prostitute. Many conditions Orwell describes resemble prison and the tramp's lifestyle could be called social penitentiary, where one is sentenced for the crime of being poor. He argues that if tramps are worse than other people, then this is the result and not cause of being poor. Orwell also challenges society's opinions about tramps' wasteful and unproductive lifestyle. He says that tramps work as much as the lower classes, but the kind of work they are able to perform doesn't allow them to better their social condition, and often they are taken advantage of by others, since society offers them very little protection. During his vagabonding, Orwell met many interesting individuals who communicated in their own language and developed a unique perception and philosophy of life. I said, it seems to me that when you take a man's money away, he's fit for nothing from that moment. No, not necessarily. If you set yourself to it, you can live the same life, rich or poor. You can still keep on with your books and your ideas. You just got to say to yourself, I am a free man here. He tapped his forehead. And you are all right. To sum it up, Down and Out in Paris and London is Orwell's effort at explaining poverty and to show there isn't much difference between the classes outside the amount of money each one can get his hands on. The mass of the rich and the poor are differentiated by their income and nothing else, and the average millionaire is only the average dishwasher dressed in a new suit. To me, Down and Out in Paris and London is a type of a travel book, and an English travel book within the tradition of the great British writers such as Somerset Mon, V.S. Pritchett or Graham Greene, who had an innate gift of observation and cold analytical perception of the world around them. Orwell compares being poor in France to being poor in England and he gives us his critical view of the Western class system, and also writes about his political preferences, which were always somewhere on the left. I think for Orwell, Down and Out in Paris and London was was a very personal book where he reinvented himself, not as a writer, but as a human being, and connected with the lower classes, and became the Orwell we know from his writings, since this was his first published book. Orwell came from an upper middle class, was well educated and a bit of a snob as he himself admitted, and until his struggles in Paris and London didn't know much about poverty. So this experience seems to have made him more sensitive to the general suffering of the humanity. Further, the book can be also taken as criticism of capitalism, And it is, but I think that things had improved a bit since then, even if there are some people who wouldn't agree with it. Maybe it would be a good idea for the younger generation to read the novel just just to get a bit of a perspective on their own lives and appreciate what they have and how far we have come as a society. Down and Out in Paris and London can be compared to and took inspiration from Jack London's People of the Abyss, whom Orwell admired, and also there's some influence of the play The Lower Depths by Russian writer Maxim Gorky, which was beautifully adapted to cinema by Akira Kurosawa and is one of my favorite classic Japanese films. Okay, let's talk about the physical book. The book I am holding is a paperback which I transform into hardcover leather-bound edition. To make the cover, I use grade A, naturally tan hide, I buy from a tanner in North Spain. It is the same leather Louis Vuitton uses to make his bags, so it is top quality. I do all the processing of the leather myself. First, I design the cover, and for this one I used a painting of a bum or a drunk or probably both, laying down and out on the street, and I thought it nicely related to the book. 
Uh, this is the bag with the blurb and inside the cover I printed a quote from the book. Uh, if, you, if you want to see a more detailed video where I explain how I transform paper bag into leather hardcover, click on the link in the description. I will make a maximum of 100 editions of each title. Each one will be numbered and initialed and the numbers will go in chronological order from two up since number one stays with me. The price will be around $100. So if you would like me to make one for you, you can click on, you can click below on my email and send me a message. I do not guarantee I will do it since it will depend on the time I have available access to the letter and if I can get my hands on the copy of the book. Now, if you're not willing to spend the $100, but you still want the book, what you can do is click below on the PayPal link and donate $3 or more to my channel. And for every 100 donations, I will make a lottery and draw one name and the winner will receive the book. So if you are cheap but feel lucky, this might be the way to do it. Also, your donations give me the extra motivation to make the book reviews and I appreciate them very much. So thank you in advance. One more thing, when you make your donation, remember to include the title of the book you would like to win. Uh, the book itself is beautiful. Visually, it has a very nice texture. It smells great. And the more you handle it, the more beautiful it will become. And it makes a great gift for yourself or somebody who appreciates books. So if you want one, don't snooze or you might lose. Well, that's it. So let's end it here. And until next time, keep your ear close to the ground and read a book. Adios.